<laughs> All right, hi guys. Okay, so I'm gonna jump in. I have a pretty long disclaimer at the end. This is my disclaimer sign. And I have a short disclaimer at the beginning. And this is how it begins. If you are about to take your NREMT, or if you're about to take a practical, if you're gonna take any kind of written test whatsoever, if you're gonna do any kind of scenario work where you will be under the auspices of a uh, instructor or a proctor, that's watching you and grading you, do not listen to the rest of this video. This video is for real life purposes. In another video, I have real life, test life, scenario life uh, episodes, and this is for your real life only. Will not work for testing or scenario work. GCS, Glasgow Coma Scale, four, five, and six, total of 15. You can get as low as three. A rock has a GCS of three. You can get as high as 15. What's important to know is that I don't want you to spend a lot of time calculating out all your little finite numbers. And so this is why I wanted to do this video more or less than, um, than anything else. The GCS scale was invented in 1974 for post-operative patients in the ICU uh, with head trauma. It hasn't changed since then. Somewhere, somehow, it got involved into the pre-hospital setting and we are currently using it for head trauma patients in the ICU setting. And now we're kind of using it on every patient. Both medical and trauma patients are, um, we're using the GCS scale where we used to use an AVPU scale or the Awake and Alert scale. So let's go over it real quick. Um, you're gonna get a total of 15, so four points for eyes, five points for verbal, six points for motor, and as I've shown you here, I've graded it down to A, B, C, D, and E, and that's just for our purposes for this video presentation. That's not something I want you to remember. Um, the grading is because um, it's not really that important to me if you have a GCS of 15, right? If you're awake and alert and oriented times four, um, and you have a GCS of 15, that's great, that's good. But my antennas are down, I'm not really that worried about it. Um, if, my, uh, if my GCS of three, I might be worried, I might, I might be, uh, I'll pay attention to you if you say GCS of three, if you say anything that my GCS is between four and eight, I'm not that concerned because my next step is I'm going to assume that you're taking care of this person's airway. Remember that old rhyme that I can't seem to make rhyme, but if you have a GCS of eight, you're going to consider intubate. Okay. Um, in any case, even the three is not that important is because anything from a GCS of three to eight, you're going to be worried about, you're going to be taking care of the airway most probably. And in that situation, it's only technically important that you tell me that's a GCS of three uh, and, well, on your handoff. All right, uh, went over GCS of 15. If you have a GCS of 14, I'm slightly concerned. I'm not exactly sure what's going on. I know that you're not awake and alert and appropriate to the 15 level, but you might be awake and alert and oriented times three, and I'm not 100% concerned. I am gonna keep an eye on you, make sure you don't go downhill, and if you stay 14 or you pump up to 15, I'm still gonna keep an eye on you and uh, watch you out until I can uh, give a proper handoff. All right, so that only leaves us with GCS of nine to 13. That's the strange range. That's the range that I want to take care about. And this is also the reason why I don't really care if you're uh, having inappropriate words or incomprehensible sounds. If you're mumbling, I can't tell whether you're trying to make a word or a sound. It doesn't really matter. It's going to keep me in that 9 to 13 range. If you are flexion withdrawal or extension withdrawal, um, to, to painful stimuli. I'm trying to figure out in the back of the medic whether you're a two or a three for motor commands, but when you come down to it, your GCS is nine to 13, it doesn't really make a difference on what we are gonna end up doing, what they are gonna end up doing in the hospital, in the trauma bay. So GCS of four to eight, we're basically gonna go into the trauma bay. 
We're going to make sure it's not a lung issue or a heart issue and we'll probably end up going to the operating room to take care of the airway blood pressure circulation, right? This is your A, B, C, and then this is going to be your D for disability or deformity or um, D for your neuro issues. Again, we're talking about head trauma here. We're not really talking about just plain alcohol or uh, sleeping pills on your GCS of 14, right? So keeping it together with a GCS of 9, 13, that person who continues to be a GCS of 9 to 13 who's not improving or is getting worse is probably going to end up going to the OR fairly quickly, right? They might go to CT scan to, to make sure it's a bleed, but GCS between 9 and 13, they're probably going to go to the OR fairly quickly after we get the ABCs uh, taken care of in the trauma bay. So, uh, 15 and 14, we're probably going to watch and monitor. They might, they'll, we'll definitely have time with uh, 15 to go to CT scan and we'll have time uh, the 14 to monitor further as long as they're not decompensating, go to the CT scan, find out what's going on because that might not necessarily mean that we're going to have to go to the operating room. So this one's probably going to go to the operating room for not the head issue. This one's probably going to go to the operating room for the ABC and D ABC issue. This one's probably going to go to the operating room for the head issue, but they're going to make sure that this is stable first. And then a, um, and then those guys here, we've got time to monitor. So that's the reason why I don't want you to spend a ton of time trying to figure out whether you're in, you're responding to pain or not pain when, we can figure out what that is and whether it's done to, when whether the reaction was done to pain and i don't really want you to worry about whether it's a word or a sound that they're trying to make um, or if it's flexion withdrawal or flex or extension withdrawal that they're doing so again these are your uh, minor points if you're below the two on your eyes below the three on your verbal or below the four on your motor then you're probably gonna be in this nine to 13 range. I do, I would prefer if you had the time to be as accurate as possible, but I don't want you to waste time not transporting by trying to do advanced math in the rig at two in the morning um, when it's raining and, um, and it's uh, the medic sliding back and forth, fishtailing in, in, uh, in the, these windy, rainy conditions. So that's what I mean to say is that calculating it out isn't as important um, if you are in the 9 to 13 range. Again, uh, if you're below 8, I'm thinking you're taking care of the airway. If you're 14, slightly concerned, keep an eye on it. 15, not very concerned at all unless they decompensate. And then the 9 to 13 range, I've got my ears to the, to the stethoscope and I'm, I'm really paying attention to what's going on. Whether it's a 9 or whether it's an 11 or whether it's a 12 or whether it's a 13 or whether it's a 10, not that important as far as pre-hospital goes. And as far as GCS scale goes, that isn't really indicative of how well the patient's going to be except for where that patient's going to head off to once they've uh, been in, uh, introduced into the trauma bay. All right, so a couple of things I wanted to discuss uh, before disclaimers. By the way, uh, that's all I had to really say about the GCS scale. Everything else is going to be fluff, but I've had a couple of students in the past that have asked, oh, well, why? what happens if there's a language barrier? Well, then you say, I have a GCS of 14, but I have a language barrier. Or there might be some eye damage, so you don't you can't get an accurate GCS because of eye damage, or uh, there might be a disability, or I don't know. Um, I guess I can't say disability now; it's 2020. It's uh, differently abled. They might be dis differently abled, or they might be developmentally delayed. In th those cases, you're going to have to say it. A, a GCS scale doesn't really work for anyone younger than five. It, it's hard to ascertain. And of course, if they're already intubated, then that throws off my, um, my verbal right there. I, even though they might be awake and alert and writing to me and, um, and writing mom and FaceTiming their, their spouse, uh, they might not, they won't have uh, any verbal cues. So I'll give them a T for intubated for verbal. 
um, and they'll end up probably with a 10T or 11T, um, depending on how awake and alert they are. Okay, so uh, that's what I had to say. My other disclaimer is no good deed goes unpunished. Follow your protocols and procedures. You do not want to change anything. You don't want to be in front of your supervisor telling them how you saw this guy on YouTube um, explain this and this is how you decided to change your practice. So follow your protocols and procedures. If you must, change your protocols and procedures and follow the new ones that you helped develop. Be, uh, be open for change. It's now May 2020. They, we might all of a sudden start using a different scale tomorrow. There's 15 of them out there. And, um, and in that case, that will negate everything that I just said. There are some specialties involved. Some of you guys are just running critical care transports on neurosurgical patients. You know, I want you to be pretty specific. I don't want you to be trying to guess with uh, whether they're in making incomprehensible sounds or making words or I want you to know exactly whether they're decorticate or decerebrate posturing if you are running critical care transports on post-surgical neurosurgical patients only, all right? Um, uh, if I have any additional uh, comments or if I've made any big mistakes that I need to change, I'll either delete the video or put it in my comments section. So feel free to follow that. There are some possible future episodes depending on what you have to ask me. So feel free to open that up. If, um, if it ends up not being the, the, the best question available, I will create a video on it and I will delete the comment so that um, we can save some face um, uh, as far as what, what your comments are. A lot of the things that I've gone through are because people have asked me, well, what happens if his, uh, he's a W amputee and he can't uh, give me a thumbs up? Come on, really? Uh, we're going to still use the GCS scale. We'll figure something out. Okay. Um, so upcoming, uh, website might be outside J3, outside J3 at .com. And that's just going to centralize all my teaching videos, whether, whatever I'm teaching, it's just going to be all there, um, in better format. And then of course, if you feel like supporting me, I could really use a video editor so that I don't have to do this all in one setting and be worried about my dog jumping on my leg. Okay, talk to you later. I'm gonna leave this up just so you can see it for, uh, do a screenshot of it and uh, take care, be safe. Um, watch, watch your back, watch your six.